A major heat wave across the central U.S., severe weather from the upper Midwest all the way to the southeast, and a tropical depression forming likely this weekend are the three main talking points in today's weather forecast. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, everyone. All your weather coverage on this Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. We have a lot to talk about in today's weather forecast, so let's waste no time, get right to it here. Heat alerts across the United States in the maroon reds across the Pacific Northwest, where we are gearing up for heat this weekend. Those are excessive heat watches. Also, heat advisories in orange from Western Oregon down into Northwest California. In orange, over here in the central, southeastern U.S. and up toward the northeast, we have heat advisories as well in the pink shaded colors. Those are excessive heat warnings where the most extreme heating is as we go through today. And the heat alerts itself cover 27 of the 50 United States here as we go through today. So here is the culprit, is the risk of high pressure extending from the Four Corners region eastward through the lower Mississippi River Valley and into the southeast. And that's where the most intense heating is as we go through today. So high temperatures this afternoon, well into the 90s and even into the triple digits from southern portions of Nebraska into Kansas, Oklahoma, western Missouri, even down here into Texas and then back into the desert southwest. Multiple areas above 100 degrees this afternoon. Out east, it's not much better. It's still into the 90s. And when you factor in the moisture content into the environment, we actually see heat and indexes like in Kansas City getting close to 115 this afternoon same thing there in Omaha up to 110 in Des Moines so it's going to feel very hot to the body as you go outdoors so make sure to stay hydrated and also if you your job ventures you outdoors make sure to take frequent breaks in the shade and better yet even in an air conditioned building to stay cool and looking at the heat and all the dry soil out there out west raging fires across the desert southwest especially across California into much of the Rockies there and that wildfire smoke is actually traversing along with the jet stream across portions of the northern U.S. That's where the jet stream is. So you may be noticing some hazier skies this afternoon up in the Dakotas, maybe northern Minnesota and Wisconsin where the, the smoke is a little bit thicker this afternoon. But that storm energy we were talking about here yesterday did produce a lot of severe weather. Look at the blue here. That's wind reports stretching from the Dakotas, Wisconsin, all the way down here into Florida and Georgia and the Carolinas as well. 231 wind reports, a tornado or land spout at least was reported in northern Nebraska, 37 hail reports. We had 269 severe weather reports all told from yesterday on Tuesday, J uh, July 30th. And you can see the highway for storms, where that will be. We have a shortwave trough up here, pretty potent across South Dakota and Nebraska today, a little dip in the jet stream there. That's going to ignite some big storms, and that's the area where we have that level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk for severe weather by the Storm Prediction Center. This was the 11.30 a.m. update. You can see this does stretch from eastern South Dakota into southwestern Minnesota, east Nebraska, and central and western Iowa with a slight risk extending over here through the Illinois and Ohio River Valleys, including Illinois, Indiana, parts of Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, western Virginia, and also west Virginia. The main threats here, initial storms will pose, is going to be large to very large hail, especially where you see these dashed lines outlined in black. That's where we could be seeing hailstones in excess of two inches in diameter. That is hen egg size or larger. As storms grow upscale, we're going to see what we call a mesoscale convective system. And sometimes during the summer, we can see derechos evolve from that. We are not expecting a derecho today, but it is possible that we have one that could develop here with the environment we have today in the outlined in black with the dashed lines. That's where we could be seeing hurricane force wind gusts over 75, possibly over 80 miles per hour as we go through the day. And a couple of tornadoes spin up tornadoes are very possible only a two percent chance we don't have a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere that is turning with height but we have some. So the tornado threat is maximized at 2% for Aberdeen, Sioux Falls, the Twin Cities region, and just west of there, down into Hastings, Omaha, Des Moines, Springfield, Illinois, Indianapolis, and then all the way down through Cincinnati, Louisville, and Lexington, Kentucky, as we go through today. A lot of major metropolitan areas in line with that. So this afternoon, within the next couple of hours, initiation will begin across eastern South Dakota, southwest Minnesota, and down into Nebraska. The first 
further south you go, the initiation is a little bit more uncertain as it's closer to that ridge axis and a little bit more capping of the atmosphere further south. As we go into the evening, some of that capping will erode across northern Kansas and Nebraska, but for the further north, some of those storms in and around Sioux Falls there definitely could be very impressive with some hail reports possibly over two, three inches in diameter, and then upscale growth into a bow echo is possible across portions of southern Minnesota, especially through central and western Iowa there, the Hawkeye State, back down there into portions of northern Missouri and eastern Kansas as you get the lower end of that line there into early Thursday morning. This bow echo will be producing some very heavy rainfall through your Thursday morning commute. Through August 1st, some rainfall amounts here from Iowa into northern Illinois, northeastern Missouri, and southern portions of Minnesota could be exceeding an inch here in the yellow shaded colors. That's where we have that slight risk for flash flooding here, extending from the upper Midwest down through the Ohio Valley as we go in through your Thursday morning commute. Speaking of Thursday, that ridge is going to start to strengthen and also retrograde a little bit further off to the west. Same thing on Friday, really building here across portions of the Rockies and the west. And that means temperatures will really start to warm up over the next couple of days out west as well as we turn the page to August. These are your high temperatures, August 1st, Thursday afternoon, 90s across the west, the Pacific Northwest, 90s at times across the southern Canadian prairies of Manitoba, southern Saskatchewan, and southern Alberta there, and then really starting to heat up in excess of 100 degrees Fahrenheit in parts of Washington State Friday afternoon, maybe 100 degree readings up here into eastern and northeastern Montana as well. And you can see the reason why we're warming up so quickly up in this region is because the soil moisture is very low here. You can see we are lacking in moisture here below the surface of the uh, of the earth and that means that our temperatures are going to reflect that. So that means temperatures are going to be warming up very quickly because of that. And going back to the storm potential on Thursday, it's not done yet. We still have a slight risk of severe weather level 2 out of 5 severe risk, including places like Chicago, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and then over here toward portions of Louisville. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Mainly a wind and hail threat, but a couple tornadoes will be possible. This is your lightning flash density. Basically, the brighter the colors, the more likely you'll see a thunderstorm on Thursday. And then that will grow upscale Thursday evening, Thursday night, into possibly at least a loosely organized mesoscale convective system here with the strongest part of that probably diving more south and east than east. So areas of southern Indiana into Kentucky will probably be in line with the stronger storms Thursday evening and Thursday night. Then that all moves off to the east on Friday. Broad brush level one out of five marginal risk for the mid-Atlantic, the southeast here, and the Ohio Valley. This could get upgraded in parts of this closer to the coast to maybe a slight risk as we get closer with enough confidence. But right now, looking at isolated to widely scattered storm coverage during the day on Friday and then more isolated to widely scattered again as we go into Friday night. Rainfall totals between now and Saturday morning through August 3rd will be pushing a couple of inches here from Iowa through parts of Illinois, Indiana, southern lower Michigan, through much of Ohio there, Kentucky, West Virginia, eastern Tennessee, even parts of southern Georgia and Florida seeing some heavy rainfall. A swath there of one to as much as three inches of rain will be possible. And zooming it in here, some major metropolitan areas in line here, Des Moines around an inch of rain, just shy of an inch of rain there in Chicago. Indianapolis could be ending up picking up two or three inches. Louisville, the Cincinnati down to Lexington could see around two inches. And then Charleston, West Virginia could also be seeing an inch. Knoxville, Tennessee around an inch and a half. So those are some major metropolitan areas in line to see the heavy rainfall through Saturday. Speaking of the weekend, that ridge is going to hang strong across the west. So what that means is our temperature anomalies are going to go well above average out here, especially for the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies up to around 20 degrees above the average for this time of year and looking at precipitation trends this weekend it's bone dry out here so it's dry it's hot so make sure to stay hydrated and also if you do venture outdoors for your job or anything like that or just for outdoor activities this weekend please be careful out west it is going to be very hot out there make sure again stay hydrated and find air conditioning out west also across the east pretty unsettled from the northeast down into the mid-atlantic and the southeast including florida there on saturday and then more hit or miss storms across the north or the east as we go into Sunday. Overall, rainfall totals aren't very impressive anywhere across the United States here. Maybe some rain across the north, stretching from the Rockies in over here toward the upper Midwest. And then the heavier rains 
maybe for the I-95 corridor, Boston, Hartford, New York City, Trenton, and then down toward Philadelphia and Baltimore. Could be seeing a swath of one to two inches there. The model has backed off on the rainfall amount since yesterday, so not as heavy, but still an inch of rain is still decent, so watching out for some minor flooding and marginal risk for flooding there as we go into Saturday. And then Sunday, this is more of an I-95 and interior New England potential as we end the weekend. Looking at the tropical weather update here, uh, we are looking at a 60% chance of development, still greater than 50% here. So the odds are for this to develop as we head into the weekend for areas near the Bahamas and around Florida or so. And right now that system is over the Lesser Antilles and moving in closer to Puerto Rico. As you can see some widespread convection, thunderstorm activity. You can see these overshooting tops very tall up in the atmosphere with these deep reds and everything. And that is moving into an environment favorable for some very warm water temperatures here. Look at the shelf waters here off the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. You can see the waters even in the eastern Gulf here are very warm, and much of the northwest Atlantic are pretty warm here currently. So with that in mind, those are just one of the parameters. And with low wind shear, a tropical depression has about a 60 to 80% chance here to develop through your Sunday, August 4th timeframe near the Bahamas or into the Western Bahamas, getting very close to Florida and a tropical storm potentially up to 40, 50% chance is possible just off the East coast of Florida and toward the Carolinas as we round out the weekend on Sunday, August the 4th. The next name on the list is Debbie. So We'll be watching for that if that is named this weekend, and you bet we'll keep you covered right here on this channel. So forecast breakdown for you today, a major heat wave to continue across the central U.S. Make sure to stay hydrated. Make sure to get fine shade and find air conditioning here across those areas. The heat wave will be building out west as well this weekend, so make sure out there as well. Stay hydrated, find shade, find air conditioning. Rounds of severe storms and heavy rainfall will traverse the northern and eastern periphery of that ridge especially from the upper Midwest into the eastern U.S. as we go in through the weekend. And then Tropical System could be named Debbie this weekend. We just showed you that closer to Florida and the Bahamas. We'll be keep tracking that on this channel. So subscribe to the channel if you're new here to keep the latest information on the weather here right at your fingertips. Make sure to press the like button down below. Give it a thumbs up if you like today's weather forecast. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those after the video. And I hope everyone has a wonderful end of July out there.